And there are some key benefits to this over and above mechanical removal of, of manure. And the, the key one I've put in red is it's improving that soil health and that water quality. I'll show you some of the benefits in a second, but it's quite phenomenal just what they do simply by burying and tunneling beneath those horse piles. Of course, they minimalize forage fowl as well. I can't say eliminates it, but it will minimalize it because not all dung is completely removed. Most of it will be. And of course, it's reducing your dependency on drenches, of course. And of course, the, the, the key thing difference here with these beetles is that once you've put them in your paddock and they've established, they are self-sustaining and there's little management that you need to do once they're in your paddock. The non-benefits, which is probably more of a risk more than non-benefit, is again, some of these drenches, and we've had a quick discussion, which we'll probably elaborate on a little bit, is that maybe many of the drenches that we are utilising for the horse industry aren't actually detrimental to dung burying fauna, including earthworms. So it may not be such a problem. But one of the risks, of course, with some of those drenches is that they can retard or eliminate success in establishing your beetles because some of those compounds are residual in the manure post the treatment of the animal and it has deleterious effects on the, on the survivorship of the things feeding on the manure. That can stop establishment of your beetles. Yeah. What about fertilizers? Yeah. Fertilizers have zero effect or impact on dung beetles themselves because dung beetles are basically freeloaders on the paddock. They, they don't care much about soil pH or anything really. They just utilize it for making nests. And so yeah, those things and herbicides have no impact either. Um, the other one is a lag in time. So with any biological agent, it doesn't just happen instantaneously. You will get a, a colony of beetles, but those colony beetles need to multiply. You sort of life cycle. One female may produce anything from 15 to maybe 50 eggs in her lifetime. And if it's six to nine weeks, the numbers will quickly grow at an exponential rate. So you, eventually you get a good carrying capacity of beetles proportional to the amount of manure on your paddocks. Once that's there, that's self-sustained at that level. Um, but there is a lag in time to get to that point. So when you put them out, you're not just going to suddenly see them instantaneously. They sort of dilute into the environment, get on with their thing in the background, and eventually the carrying capacity gets to a point where you can start recovering it and seeing it. But that's like any biological control organism. It takes time to build the numbers up. Um, some of those benefits uh, from just the services provided by dung beetles are quite phenomenal. We know all of this stuff because it's so heavily studied in literature overseas and also what we're currently doing in New Zealand. But soil structure and function, we know tunneling improves um, increased level plant nutrients in the subsoil, similar to those levels of, of adding solid fertilizer inputs because manure is full of nitrates and phosphates and potassium and all those good bits. If you can bury it, then why add solid fertilizer inputs, which are quite expensive, because it's all sitting in your dung. Um, we've found some, um, well, we've done some studies overseas on the very similar um, pastures as we have here in New Zealand, and we're currently conducting the same experiments here now, is that beneath each animal manure pile, we are finding increased levels in phosphates and nitrates and all the other chemicals up to about two to three years post any dung beetle activity. So that level is increased beneath the soil uh, for a quite a long period of time post dung beetle activity. Eventually, especially in intensive pastoral systems where it's probably a little bit more applicable, but through random repeated depositions of manure on paddocks at any given time over three or four or five or six rotations on the paddock, you're eventually going to get a fairly big coverage of manure on a paddock. And with that, all of it buried by the beetles, you're just going to get all of that nutrient stuff underground and elevated levels for quite some period of time. So it'll virtually do away with your requirement for solid fertilizer inputs. So yeah, um, the manure is actually really beneficial because it's full of good stuff. Um, of course, we want to increase the air spaces in the soil as well. So we want to improve soil structure. So those tunnels in increase airways, it reduces the compaction, it brings those deep down soils up to the surface. And of course, it increases the amount of organic matter that we're putting into the soil. So all of that organic carbon, for example, is going underneath the ground. It's being utilized by all the microbes, also by the plants. Improved soil structure means greater penetration of the grass roots and improved root biomass as well. 
And of course, some of the studies that we've found as well is that pastoral earthworms benefit quite enormously as well. Following dung beetle activity, we find a five-fold increase in the, not only the biomass, but also the size of the earthworms post-dung beetle activity, because all that dung is actually in the ground. I should add, is that when they bury manure, this, this pot here is full of old cast off um, balls of, of dung. And while we show that the dung beetles are utilizing all this manure from the surface, they're not very efficient in terms of how much they utilize for their babies in each ball. So they leave probably, um, well, carries in the, there's a lady here, Carrie Yoshida, she's um, my production manager for dung beetle innovation. She'll know all about this kind of stuff. But, um, would say what at least half of the ball is left behind after a, one third. about a third. Um, no, one third yeah, so about a third is used, and about two thirds is left behind by the dung beetle once the the new adults come up. So that's a lot of manure left in the ground after the dung beetle has been and done with it, which is being um, utilised by the earthworms and the microorganisms and the grass roots, and that's a lot of organic carbon captured beneath the pasture surface. Um, so we know it has great benefits to earthworms. Um, water issues, well, we're also looking at this, but um, that's one of the key ones for a lot of this dung beetle work in New Zealand. Um, and again, particularly at um, livestock that's intensively farmed. Um, but of course, the knock-on effect for improving soil structure is that we can get greater uh, infiltration into the soil horizon by things like um, urea from, from horses and cows peeing. And of course, all of those manures going in rather than across the surface. So uh, that reduces contaminants entering waterways. And this, of course, improves our water quality. So we've got a water accord in this country with a mandate to try and improve the level of water quality that we have in New Zealand, which is currently very low. So we want to try and improve the water quality. And one of the best ways is simply removing the surface manure which is not going through and on to, into the waterways. Um, we know that we can do an, a substantial contribution to um, getting rid of the manure, therefore we have more pasture surface available for grazing. We know dung plus beetles has significant increases in plant quality, the height, the biomass, basically everything about the nutrient levels of the plants because manure is full of nutrients. And of course, the biomass and the growing depth is significantly increased. You can get roots deeper down. That's also got an improved drought tolerance as well. So if you've got deeper roots, more tolerant to dry periods. They are attracted to brand new fresh manure. So if it's old and no longer smelly, they're not going to come to it. Let's say they do come to it and you have a good abundant supply of dung beetles, then a good majority of that should be disappearing underneath the ground. So we have beetles that are big beetles, we have small beetles. The big beetles remove a large volume of manure because they have to for the size of the ball they produce. So in some circumstances we would expect to see what 80% or more of that manure buried within 24 to 48 hours after it's been put down by, um, voided by the animal. So um, that's when though you're at a point where you've got an abundant supply of dung beetles. So you would not expect to see that in the first couple of few years of releasing the beetles. The numbers have to build up to get to that kind of benefit where we see That's these things. That's what you'd aim for at that sustained level, yeah. Um, this isn't really big in New Zealand, but it was overseas. The key reason why they brought dung beetles into Australia, because uh, they had the same problem as us in terms of no native beetles really transitioning to the exotic cows that were brought into the country. But there's vast numbers of um, Oh, so that's, I'm jumping ahead of myself. This one here is applicable to us, sorry. This is um, the key one about gut parasites and nematodes. It's, it's a huge issue. It's something like a, well, you might probably know otherwise, but um, I think it's something order of a $700 million industry in New Zealand with resistance management and all the other bits and pieces. It's quite a, a big industry. But we know we can get um, up to about 76% reduction in the reinfection rates of gut parasites following dung beetle activity which is quite significant. There's a lot of literature that backs that up, including us. So we've even done that in this country and find the same level of, of knockback in the number of gut parasites, which would help us greatly for those of us that rely quite heavily on drenches, for, particularly for gut parasites. Um, dung beetles will help reduce that, that chokehold that, that we currently have on us for the drench use. 
Um, the one I was elaborating on before is about the face and horn flies that some countries have, which are a real burden on stock over in places like Australia or other tropical countries. But they brought in dung beetles to control dung breeding flies. If the fly breeds in manure and you introduce a dung beetle, the dung beetle can bury that manure much faster than the fly can breed in it, thus knocking on the head on the entire population of the, the pest flies. So we found 95% loss of dung breeding flies in Hawaii and about 80 to 88 to 90 percent in, in Australia excuse me um, by burying the manure very quickly uh, I don't we, from what I understand we don't see do we see flies as a, a nuisance problem in in the uh, agricultural world do you know do we find it as a, a nuisance is it a, a fly strike for sheep so we do have issues with them, but none of them are really breeding in manure though, are they? No, manure's got biting flies that feed Yeah, stomoxis, isn't it? Yeah, that, that, does that, yeah, we're, yeah, so we... I think so, but I don't actually know the life cycle of those. Yes, I'm not sure if we have any flies in this country that are truly of nuisance value like they have overseas that are biting and big problems that lose weight loss on livestock, etc. in Australia. I think here we don't classify flies as a key nuisance. Of course we do have house flies and house fly disease transmission pathways from manure to animals to our kitchen surfaces. Um, you may know as well in the Campylobacteriosis, um, they kind of point the finger at house flies being one of the key vectors for this problem with humans and it's way higher in New Zealand than any other countries in the OECD. Um, but they're visiting manure. Um, yeah, so carbon, I just alluded to that before. Um, it's organic carbon that we can get rid of on a great rate. Um, it basically sits on the surface of the, uh, of the past surface and it's doing nothing on the surface. But um, if we can get rid of it from the surface, we can increase it uh, by burying it, sequestering it underground. Um, and of course that increases plant root production through improvement of soil, physical, biochemical properties. Um, yeah, so this is one of the key take-home points. By rapidly manipulating fresh dung, dung beetles will aerate wet dung pads, thereby reduce anaerobic conditions needed for methane production. So these, these bacteria that are uh, anaerobic, so they don't like any oxygen, and they produce methane as a byproduct off, off that environment. But as soon as you put air into a, a manure pile and put a lot of air into the manure pile, these bacteria can't survive and it knocks the whole methane production on the head. So we know we can effectively control methane at least from the, the voided poos from horses and cows and sheep by using dung beetles. I think you'll find the agricultural researchers are focusing more on changing the, the I'm probably right in saying I guess the, the gut or the types of feed or the gut environment inside the, the livestock rather than worrying about what comes out the other end.